We were blessed with a lot of green beans this year. They were contenders and they've done well. My Cherokee Purple's done pretty good this year. I love them. I made salsa out of this picking of tomatoes. It was really good. My rosemary never lets me down. I love rosemary. And I always look so forward to the first homegrown potatoes. My ginger finally took off and started growing. I planted that stuff and uh, I ordered it online and it come in and I had two knobs of ginger and I planted it and for two months it just sat there and didn't do nothing but all of a sudden it took off and now it's just really growing good so don't give up on your ginger. Well, as the summer garden is fading fast, we're looking forward to the fall garden. I look forward to cooler weather, the greens, the turnips, and all your cool weather crops. This is my first year for growing loofah, and I, I absolutely love it. Um, I got quite a few loofahs this year, not, not a bumper crop, but a few, so I will be growing them again. The lavender's still looking really good. We'll holler. Hope everybody's doing good. It's time to plant garlic. It's about, oh, probably a month before we have a frost, usually by the end of October, and I try to plant the garlic about four weeks before frost, give it a chance to root. I took this bed yesterday and we had the ducks in here and they've kind of naturally fertilized it and I added some leaf compost that had been sitting for about a year and uh, added to it and mixed it up and I actually turned it from bottom side up and remixed it and I've done got about 65 garlic cloves planted because my bed's a little higher than my board I can't put my board across here to walk on this old man ain't got a back anymore, so I take me a stick, and I'm using a square stick because the hole won't fill back up with, with uh, dirt as fast, and it's dirt soft, and I'm putting it about four inches. It's pretty easy to put in there. I don't really want to pack it, but I'm just making little holes about six inches apart. If I feel a rock like I do right there, I'm going to go in there and dig that rock out, and it's a big one. I can't believe you find rocks on this hill. I want you to look for a rock. <laughs> I put that in there with the tractor. Hey, that was my toe. I put that in there with the tractor. That's the hazard of being around me when I'm gardening. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm doing it like that right there. And we're going to have, this bed's going to look like it's going to make about 80... I'm putting it about, like I say, this is going about three and a half, four inches deep. The garlic's going to sit in there, and the top of it's going to be roughly two and a half, three inches from the top. You don't want to bury it real deep. And also, these holes like this, this garlic, you see that it has a pointed end on it up here. This is the part that was against the clove itself, the root part. When you, and this is where your roots are going to come from, is this flat end. A little pointed end like this, you want to go up. And when you put it in these holes, 
they're a natural guide to make it stand up. It ain't necessary like that, but it's just something I do. Makes it easier on me. And I'm gonna stick them down in them holes, just like that. And this dirt's Show pretty, them again which way you stick, on the, stick to the bottom. This here's the curly cue on top, a little that's pointed in. That's, that's the, the flat, and that's, that's the, the bottom. Part. That's what you want to put down in the dirt. Is that right there? And when I get them in there, all I'm doing is just taking my hand and I'm working it like this. I just work me some dirt over top of that hole and just smooth it out a little bit, and that's all there is to it. We ought to have garlic coming up. Now, um, some people plant their garden in spring, which is good. Uh, we plant ours in fall they go uh, they'll get so tall the they'll sprout and let's see last year they got pretty tall before hard winter we covered them with leaves yeah I put them to bed for the winter I come in here they after, go dormant I, I come in here after when the weather really started getting cold I took this leaves and put them to bed I just covered them up all except for the little tops on them just cover them full of bed. That just kind of help on the freeze part of it, but it's not a real major issue in this part of the country. Hasn't been. Used to be it would have. At one time, we had some hard winters, but um, not so much anymore. In the springs, when they really start, they just start really looking good and sprouting up and doing really good. So by the time it's harvest time, which was, when did we pull these? In July? Well, was it July? I'm an old man. You expect me to remember that? Well, now hang on. June. I think it was in June. It was in June that we harvested it the was garlic. The fourth, because it, they it were had got up and turned brown and fell over. And fell over, so it was time. Over. And they done really good. We got some really good tasting garlic. I mean, really good. So, planting in the fall is a good thing. They do really good. I think the way the weather and humidity is in this country, you're better off to plant them in the fall. I've got uh, some onion plants, little onion plants that are supposed to be coming in that I'm going to plant and have them go through the winter and go dormant, and I'm going to see how they do. Remember them onions you planted here on the end? Yeah. <clears throat> Look right here on the ground. There it is. There's an onion. Onion I got out of there yesterday. Missed it. It didn't get very big. It's stout. I smelt of it. It's <laughs> stout. You want to eat it? No, I'll pass. Okay. That's basically all there is to it. Easy peasy. <clears throat> like I say, I use little old squirt. Don't worry about it packing the dirt. Somebody's going to holler that it packs the dirt too tight in the bottom, but it, 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 it ain't. I promise you. Now, how big is this bed? This bed is about a nine by four. And you're going to plant how many cloves in it? It looks like I'm going to have, I done lost count, done buried some up, but I had about, right here I had 65 planted, and that's what we planted last year. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have in the neighborhood of uh, somewhere around 100 cloves. Good. So you can get that many in a, did you say nine? Yeah, it's a nine, it's a nine foot. Nine foot by? About four foot. Four foot. Not quite, but close to 400. 100 cloves. So thank you, Mr. Brown. That's a lot of good information. Maybe to get somebody to maybe plant some garlic in the fall. You know, we used to, when I was a kid, we didn't grow no garlic. <laughs> did y'all eat much garlic, though? We did though? not eat no garlic. I, wasn't, I didn't, this kid, we didn't know nothing about no garlic. You like it, though. Oh, I love it. And it's good for you. Yeah. And, uh, I just, I just, uh. I don't want to be without anymore. I mean, we use, this bed grows enough for me and you. And uh, and we use a lot of garlic. I mean, you put in about everything you cook, so. Look, your friends are coming to see you. I think I'm gonna throw a tomato worm out there, too. <laughs> Did you show them that our carrot Cherokee purples is a bloomer? I'm fixing to. Here, ducky duckies. Here, ducky duckies. They're not gonna make, but they're blooming. Oh, they might. My bell pepper plants are really getting tall, and what we've discovered that our bell peppers do a lot better in cooler weather than they do in the hot summer. So they're really starting to kick off now and really getting big.
I'm gonna show y'all something. These are these were our Cherokee purples that were planted all the way down this fence. Nanny cut these back. Oh, let's see. It's fixing to be October, September, probably the end of end of August. He cut them back. He caught cut them all back. Some of them we just pulled up. But we've been kind of babying them. And this Cherokee purple tomato plant is coming back with full force and blooming. Now, will we have tomatoes before the first frost? I don't know. The saga begins. Guess we'll have to just watch and see. But I want you to look. Look at the blooms on this Cherokee purple after cutting it back. So don't think that once your tomatoes are just gone and the summer heat took them over like they did ours, cut them back. See if they'll come back. Ours did. And it's, it's still just trying to take off and grow. Don't know that we'll get anything. Here's one right here. It's got a few blooms on it. Don't know if it's going to make anything, but uh, we don't give up on nothing. This one's really growing, but I don't know. I don't see much. This one's probably not going to make much, but it did come back. It did it. So maybe we'll have some winter tomatoes. Who knows? Stay tuned. Now you're gonna water it down real good? Yeah, that's one thing I didn't mention. I'm, the soil is pretty wet, but I'm gonna go ahead, cause it's supposed to be like 95 degrees for the next couple of days. And I'm gonna go ahead and water it down good. And it should be good for a while. Just some of your fall vegetables to look forward to. We're going to get our greens ready here for cooking up. And what you got to do is you just take your your leafy part and just strip it off your stem because that stem's really tough. I rinsed my, uh, my greens real good. In fact, I rinsed them about three times. Got them laid out here on the towel. I want to drain them real good and get them dry. Let's talk a little bit about the turnips. I'm not sure that I pronounce it right, but I think these are Hikari turnips. That's probably pronouncing it wrong. But they are a small, tender, sweet turnip. And I'm just going to season them up, and we're fixing to roast them in the oven. I've got some meshes dashed. This is garlic and herb. And I have found out that I really like this stuff when I'm in a hurry. It's salt free, even though I do add a little bit of salt to most of my vegetables. This is just really good stuff. You can add a little more garlic to it. So I've got olive oil, salt, a little bit of salt and pepper, and that uh, Mrs. Dash herb. You can use any kind of herbs you want. And I'm just going to get them coated really good. Now you notice that I left. Uh, part of the stems and the, and the tops on them and uh, that's the way I want to roast them it'll keep all the, the moisture, the juices in and you can cut them off when they're done roasting but we're just going to take them I've got uh, some parchment paper on my cookie sheet and my oven is at 400 bring y'all over here and I'm just gonna spread out the turnips I got a little bit of olive oil on my parchment paper too now these are small so it probably take about 30 minutes for these just take you a knife after about 20 minutes and just kind of test them now if you've got bigger turnips it's gonna take probably a good 45 minutes you just need to check them every once in a while 
But I can tell you that me and Mr. Brown are not big turnip eaters, but these turnips are delicious, especially when you roast them like this. They're really good. And turnips are very good for you. And it's that time of year for turnips. So 430 minutes. Stick them in the oven. And we'll be back to test them. I got most of my turnips cut up and put in the pan. And <laughs> if y'all never ate roasted turnips, your good, tender, small turnips, and whatever seasoning you, you like, you are missing out. I'm going to show y'all. This is one of the roasted turnips. And it is so tender. Just going to cut that top off there. And I left the skins on. So you see the inside? But all that garlic and salt and pepper and that Mrs. Dash herb uh, mix that I put on there. I mean, I could eat this in place of a piece of meat with my grains. But I will be cooking up a pork chop to go with my grains. It is so good and juicy, so good. The pork chop. We have tasted of the turnips already and they're really good. So these turnips, they were small and tender. So I guess they're a different kind. But I'm not sure I can pronounce it. I can't. It starts with H. It's Hikari. Hikari turnips. That's probably wrong, but that's close enough. They're a little white turnip. But you had a picture of them, didn't you? Yeah. But they're just so, they're a lot sweeter, too. Than they're sweet. I ate one raw, and they were really good. Now, I'm not a big turnip person at not all. Me either. The normal turnips that grow, that we used to grow. I like the greens, though. I just never would eat them. You know, the green, but the turnip. And you remember how they smelt when they were cooking in the well, kitchen? Well, Grandma would cook them, and they'd still be t big old tough things, and I just... I don't know if it was a smell or what that turned me off, but... Um, These I, are mild and sweet, and they're really good. Now, I... I you been putting butter on that cornbread? Well, I thought you were supposed to do that. Without putting any on mine? <laughs> you know... This ain't fake butter, neither. No. That's the real stuff. We don't have none of that fake stuff around here. You don't have the real butter. Those mustard greens and turmeric greens, they got a little bite to them, but they ain't, they're not real stout. No, they're good. If you like such things, they're really good. I promise we won't do another video on greens. That's already been two. But people have to understand that when you live on a homestead and you try to live as, you know, as close to the you know, being sustainable and, and eating what's good and healthy eat for healthy. you. All this food here is organic. Bro. Well, we eat seasonally. We eat mm. by the season, you know. Well, it ain't going to be long. We're going to have deer meat. <laughs> That's true. But, but this time of year is when your turnips and your greens are really, now into the cool weather, they're, they get sweeter to me. The greens do. Because when it's really hot, it seems like your greens get kind of bitter. But these aren't bitter. These greens were... I'm assuming they picked them yesterday afternoon. They might have picked them this morning. I don't know when before we picked them. I say, I'd say yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Because they were washed. So, there's been a lot of people that say they didn't understand what a CSA is. So, can you just, just kind of explain it to them a little bit. It's a community supported agriculture. Get my mouth full. And. We have a local farmer, they're not too many miles off, that runs some big hoop houses and they also grow outside the hoop houses. And they're organically grown. 
and you can subscribe, which you pay a one-time fee. It's a sub, like a subscription. It's a subscription, and you get greens every week. We pick ours up Saturday morning between 9 and 10 o'clock. We have to run a little ways to get them, but it's well worth it. We're usually out to get something anyway. So, uh, now I took a picture of what we got this week, and I took a picture of last week's too, so you can get an idea. But it's, it's the time of year for greens. I and mean, um, he said that uh, there's a lot of th different things that's coming on too, so... And I'm not too sure, but I, I'm pretty sure that he said that there'd be pumpkins and, and just bell peppers and just everything. They now, sent us a little, what, six country fresh eggs. Yeah, there was a little carton of eggs in there. That was really Well, they don't, most people, a lot of them people over there pick it up, don't have no chickens like that. That's do. true. And, and this sure. is, the CSA is so good for so many reasons because there's a lot of elderly people in that community that are not able to uh, grow garden and you know get out there and, and really work it so they can get their fresh vegetables this way so they can pretty much get them almost all year round because spring summer and fall well we're enjoying them yeah we I mean, are. until we get <laughs> i've been getting the garden bed ready today but pretty soon i'll be going ahead and planting all my my lettuces and kale and stuff in my little greenhouse but it's been so hot that I have not I just haven't done it so anyway speaking that's of hot we're supposed to have like 95 degrees for a few days it is raining right now though yeah it's nice Get a little more <laughs> rain it ain't raining much but it has rained a little you gonna put some of that hot sauce on there or did you do it already well I know you put your vinegar in it it's really good yeah, I'll put I some. might put this a little bit of Louisiana hot sauce. Okay. Just a little. T <clears throat> You've done a good job cooking here. Thank you. So, <laughs> you're nice. <laughs> I told him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. Anyways, if y'all like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Share the video. And uh, y'all come back and see us because we like it when you come sit down at our table and eat with us <laughs> and all i got to say is eat some greens yes they're good greens are so beneficial to your health you <clears throat> you men out there that are afraid to eat those greens you need to sit down and eat some <laughs> It'll be good for you they are good you'll be looking like papa papa and all that muscle all he ate was spinach what's green though he was papa the sailor man and he mm. ate him spinach mm -hmm. he didn't say mustard greens Greens. He should have. <laughs> Look at the woman he was in love with. She needed some beans and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she did. God bless everybody.